every single year in the NFL draft, there's this small school offensive lineman that's like from parts unknown, Division Four, whatever, whatever, State University. Uh, you get the grainy all 22 film, just like it's like a shot uh, by Zapruder. Zzz. That old thing, right? 2017 is Antonio Garcia from Troy. 2018, Alex Kappa from Humboldt State, which doesn't even have football anymore. They literally shut it down. Uh, 2020, of course, Ben Barsh from St. John's University. 2019, it, it was Titus Young from Alabama State, as well as Trey Pipkins, Sioux Falls, NSIC represent, plus one Oli C. Gimaka Udo from the pride of Alan University. Go Phoenix! That's plural, pluralized, yeah. And, of course, we hype up Drew Samia, but do not sleep on the second-year pro, former six-round pick, Vikings future stud, Ole Udo. Mm. So, some background. Uh, let him reintroduce himself. 6'5 and a half, 323 pounds, a redshirt senior coming out of Elon, was 22 years old at the time. Uh, started 45 games uh, for the Phoenix, all at right tackle. That's important. Uh, 2018, first team all CAA stud uh also adam zimmer coach against him in the shrine bowl so that means like a little so you have adam zimmer defensive guy then all of a sudden you have to go up against this mountain mammoth of a man and it's like hey that guy's good yeah i'm sure that really helped uh combine uh, 95th percentile in wingspan i mean dude is a straight up condor he is a 747 uh but the drawbacks you know not quick could be a, a poor scheme fit. You know, the short shuttle timing was troubling uh but also did run a, a 5.0540 so, I mean, just massive size, amazing strength, uh, plus athlete, just a, an absolute monster, uh, raw ball of just potential uh, that you just want to bring in these late rounds. So I was really hyped uh, when the Vikings picked him up in the sixth round. Uh, but once you got him in the camp, got him working with Dennison, got him working with the offensive line. I mean, the size and the strength were a given, but also things like hand placement in technique, footwork, operating in space. You, you think that they need a little bit of work, but I think they're a lot further ahead than you would think because he is way ahead of the curve when it came to like comparisons to like TJ Clemmings or Willie Beavers, who were, of course, drafted a lot higher than uh, he was in the sixth round. So he was really impressive. He, he was. He looked great in camp. Preseason, he was a stud as well. I recorded a 74 4.6 PFF grade in pass blocking and only allowed two pressures on 53 snaps. Zero. D'Angelo Russell uh, Sachs uh, was basically redshirted, uh, just uh, like uh, fellow uh, rookie Drew Samia, uh, until week 17 against the exhibition game against the Bears. And we did the film breakdown uh, on both of those guys uh, a couple days ago. And, I mean, Ole Udo was really damn impressive. and performed well in 31 snaps. Now, he had a low PFF grade because he did draw two penalties. One was a, you know, a, a pretty bad holding call. Right? Bad in the sense that it was really blatant. Not bad like it was a bad ref call. But uh, the second one was him jumping into a pile late to defend his guy, which I don't mind at all. I love that feistiness. I love the, hey, you aren't going to F with my guys. I, I really do love that. And uh, also, he pancaked Khalil Mack in, in the film. Like He just showed the raw strength, the athleticism. Uh, had a lot more bounce in the feet and, and a lot more comfort in pass sets uh, than you would imagine. So it's like, I mean, I, the Vikings certainly have something there with Ole Udo. And now, like, frankly, I think he may be a touch ahead of Drew Samir right now. And it may be like our fault, maybe like uh, you know the hashtag the the media a jabroni's fault as well. It's like oh you know Drew Samia, Drew Samia, Drew Samia, uh, penciled into that right guard spot. What if it's only Udo? It, it, it certainly could be. I mean uh, Udo does need to ramp up a little bit more aggression in the run game, but of course I mean he he has the size and the strength uh, to do that. Uh, but also uh, pass blocking is just miles ahead of where you thought it would be. Like he was really ahead of the game. And uh, as much, uh, again, as much as we hype up Samia, I mean, you really do need to hype up Oli Udo as well. Uh, and if the Vikings are truly committed to getting the best five offensive linemen on the field, like they say that every single year, except then they. Don't. Yeah, they don't do that. Um, but if they are, I mean, problem is that you already have the tackles of the future. You have Brian O'Neill entrenched at right tackle. He's becoming one, one of the better young right tackles in the league. Do you necessarily want to move him? Mm. Uh, you do have Ezra Cleveland is going to be the left tackle of the future. Plus, uh, it looks like you're going to ride things out with Riley for a year. So then you look at guard. You know, only two spots available because ain't one of them going to be a center. Problem is with Samia and Udo, I think they're much more right guards. 
Uh, even in a primarily zone scheme, you do want uh, a little bit more wiggle at that left guard spot. And generally, the right guard is still reserved for more, uh, more power, a little bit more of a plotter, uh, which is fine. I mean, but those are the trade-offs. Like, do you want the plus movement skills of Ezra Cleveland at left guard, but less anchor? Or do you want the massive aircraft carrier style anchor of Ole Udo and slightly less movement skills? Like, those are the trade-offs that the Vikings are going to have to make decisions on. And it's a conversation that's going to have to be had. Or maybe straight up Ole Udo beats out Drew Samia for that right guard spot, which is is a possibility uh, it certainly is but the thing i love about udo and samia is that they both have tackle flexibility well i mean Ole udo is a tackle by trade uh, samia played uh, a bunch of tackle at oklahoma before kicking inside so either way you just have two young strong studly hungry versatile offensive linemen who just want to get after it and i'm I'm really excited either way. I mean, yeah, you could say that, oh, they drafted Ezra Cleveland, then they sort of ignored the offensive line. Blake Brandell is whatever. Kyle Hinton is probably a couple years away, even though you really like his upside. But I, I'm really excited about what the Vikings have done. Uh, they just brought in a, a ton of just young, hungry, up-and-coming talent, especially Ole Udo. And I'm excited to see what he does this year. Uh, small school product could have a big-time impact on the Vikings offensive line in 2020. Uh, but your thoughts? Olisima Udo. Uh, 2020. Let us know in the comment section below. Subscribe for daily Vikings takes. If you want to support the work, pull us up on the Venmo. Please give us a follow on social media as well. But until next time, Skull, production value.